Hello, young artists. We are with you today studying uh, Salvador Dali and surrealism. And today I brought with my son, Sila. Can you say hi, Sila? Hi. To sculpt with us. Um, we are going to be replicating this Salvador Dali sculpture. And it is called um, Profile of Time. It's a bronze sculpture he did in 1984. Oh. And it's, again, it's one of his dreamlike kind of trees with a, a drooping clock on it, similar to the persistence of memory um, with the, all the drippy clocks in that painting. So um, I did one, a, a quick sample similar to that already, and we're gonna use um, an air dry clay. And then after it dries and you take it home, if you want to um, paint it to look similar to this, you can use just acrylic paints if you want. It's already hot. So, yeah, that one is for the people after they make theirs, though, when they take it home. So you can use some bronze colored paint, and then there's some green in here, and paint in the numbers if you want on the clock. To get it wet, does it wet up again? Yeah, so a couple a couple of things with clay, this clay. This is just an air-dried clay. Right now it's, it's pretty squishy, um, but if it starts to dry up on you, you can add a little water to it. Um, that's not going to happen. to This is for a homeschooling co-op. It's not going to happen during our class time because we're going to we only have... Uh, you know, about 30 minutes to work on it or less. So um, that's not going to be a problem for us in class, but if you're doing this outside of the co-op and yours starts to dry up, you can add some water. But when it gets to this state where it's already pretty um, hard, it's not going to, it's probably not going to come back to a malleable state. Okay, so you're going to want, this is about a quarter pound or four ounces of clay, about a ball that size. Can you hold it in your hand here so we can see how big that is? So each student should have about that much. And then we're gonna build ours on these little paper plates so that you guys can take them home. Um, in your classrooms, I recommend if you don't have, a, like my table has glass tile in it, so I can clean this off really easily if the clay gets on there. But in the classrooms, you might wanna put a tablecloth down. And then um, I just have a couple toothpicks here to do some details um, that are in here. When we're done, we can put these grooves in that look like perspective lines down on the like as if it were a wood floor that this tree is growing out of. And then the details on the clock, if we wanna, we're probably just gonna draw them in with a toothpick and some of these details in here. It doesn't look here. like a wood floor. I think it looks like a table. You see a table? a pattern and then there's the wall right there. Well, this is a ta I think the sculpture's sitting on a table here and there's a wall back there. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay, so it's cool. You're noticing lots of things in the picture. I like to encourage that. Okay, so we're gonna start by actually, we're just gonna take a piece of this off. So go ahead and Pull off a chunk, and this is going to be the little floor part. Let's try a piece about like that. Maybe a little bit more than you have there. And then we're going to just sort of flatten it out some. I think I might take a tiny bit more. We want it to be a good base so that the tree can stick to it and have it weighted down so it doesn't tip over. Okay, so I got about that much. Maybe. A little less than a third of the ball. And I'm going to start flattening it out with my fingers. You probably need a little more clay. Okay. See how much I got here? Yeah, good. Um, and then I'm going to just start to shape it into kind of a square. So I'm kind of patting on the edges and pinching the clay with my fingers as I go around. And then what's nice about this kind of clay, if you want, it, it doesn't really need any warming up. It's already soft and squishy. Modeling clay is kind of hard to start. You gotta warm it up, but this is already ready to go. And then um, if, if you don't like all these, these grooves and stuff in here, you can just smear your finger on there and it just smooths it out, just like that. Okay, so first I'm shaping it and then I'll smooth it. And then again, at the end, we'll put in the like floor, line, the board marks if we want. Okay, so I'm starting to get kind of a square there. And then I'm going to push it down each side a little bit on my plate to get more of a squared off edge. Can so I'm just it pushing it down a little bit and then turning it gently to get kind of corners on there. But that's if you're picky. I'm being picky. You don't really have to do that. Or you can just lay it down and he's just doing it. If you push it down too much on the paper yeah, plate, it'll attach to it. So I'm trying to encourage you to build the shape first, and then we're just gonna set it lightly on there because it's gonna dry on here, but hopefully it'll just lift off when it's done and not be attached to this. If you take it home and it's stuck to this paper plate, 
you can kind of peel the plate off once it's good and hard and it won't shouldn't break your your clay sculpture okay so we're gonna let you try to get that let's see this corner is not close it's kind of still a little thin you might want to add a little bit more so you have some depth to it see how thick mine is here on yeah, the side I think so that we uh it's really just a weight so that when you attach the tree to it, the tree is not going to want to tip over, right? Good. Okay, are you liking what you got there? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next part, we're going to we're gonna actually take off the piece that's going to be the clock and just set it aside. So we probably want, it doesn't have to be that much because it's really thin. If you look at our picture here, the yeah. clock is really, really thin. So I'm going to pick uh, maybe a piece a little bit bigger than like a grape tomato size. I'm going to try that. Okay. And if it seems, that seems like a lot of clay. And that's going to take us more. But um, if it seems like it's not enough when we're building it, we can always just take some from the tree if we want. Okay. So I just set that aside. And then we're going to go ahead and shape the tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a big tube first. Snakeish. Yeah, like a snake. I'm doing it in my hands instead of on the table because I don't. Well, you can on the table if you want. It's not efficient. It stick. Okay. So mine's about like that big. Mine's a thick. Tree. And I'm gonna start with the the part here in the picture. Maybe I'll just put this between ours so we can see it here. I want to make sure we're still in the shot here. Let's move you this way, so. There we go. Good. Okay, so they can see us. Just want to make sure we were still in there. Okay. Um, so I got my my trunk here. It all looks about the it's same uniformity. So remember, at the bottom of a tree, the trunk is wider. So I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to just pull off a couple. I'm not pulling them off. I'm pulling out some that's going to be the little twisty roots here. So I'm just pinching some off the bottom kind of corner and squeezing it to make it skinnier as it goes away from the tree. Okay. Okay, so I got one here. And if I really want to be picky, this side over here, this root, this is going to be the one that goes underneath, has two little, like a fork at the end. So I'm going to just pinch it into two pieces like that. You don't have to be that picky if you want. If it starts falling apart on you, you can... Um, just leave that one piece. Okay, so that's going to be the root that goes underneath for me. Now I'm going to do another one kind of at the back of the tree back here. And I'm going to squeeze it like this. And just do a second one. So right behind it in the back here. Yep, good. We're actually going to make the roots secure to the thing. Yep. And then, so mine are actually, if you're thinking about the size of this, it's getting kind of big. So I might squish it back some. So I'm pushing back towards the tree. Thanks for pointing that out, realizing that this might be getting too big for the square we made. Okay. That's better. Okay. Now I've got it, it kind of looks like legs. Like a weird animal. I'm gonna, or a snail head. I'm going to cross these over like this, because this one, the back one crosses over that and then it kind of winds back and forth a little bit like a snake oh did it fall out great well, thing about clay is you can just squeeze it back on there right that's okay it's not very sturdy yeah, clay is really squishy, so you got to kind of hold it gently while you're using, while you're moving. I'm just saying it's not very thick. Yeah. Okay, so if you have too much clay up here, not enough down here, you can always just pull some down. And you're getting kind of close to camera, so let's have you pull your hands down just a little bit so they can see it in focus. There you go. Okay, good. That's looking good. So then really gently try to cross it over and I would keep it 
you know, keep it tight right there. Like I'm pinching it. Yeah, there you go. Good. Okay, now before we stick it on there, and I did a little bit on the back side here. There's just a little tiny bit coming off the back. Um, before I stick it on the um, a little square, I'm going to... way too tall. Yep, we're going to split the top. So I'm going to pick... It's about like here. And I'm just going to squeeze between the two, like kind of making a groove in there. Now, if you notice, this branch is thicker and longer. So I'm going to, I'm sort of squeezing, putting a little bit more on that side. And then, do you see how I squeezed it enough that there's a little hole in there? I'm just going to squeeze until it rips it apart, just really gently. I'm kind of going like this with my fingers. I've got a big hole. Good. There you go. Here, tip it down so they can see. There, like that. Good, and then it should start to separate. We're just very, you got to hold it gently with one hand and shape with the other hand so it doesn't fall apart. Get this branch not. Oops, you're really high again. I know, because <laughs> this branch is not. Okay, and if it seems like it's too heavy, you can push it, yep, just push it back towards the trunk. Okay, and then I'm going to make it skinnier as I go out, because it looks like it goes out and up. Now the one that I made before, I wasn't actually looking at this, I was just doing it from memory, so the shape of the branches is a little different. But you might want to adjust them, um, because this clay is so malleable that it might not hold the weight of the clock that we put on there. Yeah, so well, this, you get this to doesn't just even hold choose. the weight of the branch. Yeah, so you've got in it, um, yeah, so... So that's good for now, but this part right here, whoops, so sorry, buddy. Um, here, hold it down a little bit lower and um, maybe fold this back and on some. I think that the center part might not be thick enough on yours. This part of the trunk, there you go. Maybe pull a little bit more down here so it's just got a little bit more weight. Also, if you have warm hands, the more you touch it, the more malleable it'll be. So um, that might be part of what you're what's helping to happen into your clay. Yeah, okay. This isn't working. Here, go, put it down a little bit. Yeah, this is just gonna fall off. Okay, so, yeah, so it's getting really flat and squish it together kind of like this part into a, a trunk shape yeah, again. Yeah, it just pulls it off. Yeah, I think that this might, you might have too much clay up here, so you might want to just pinch off a chunk at the end so it's not so heavy. Yeah, there's a problem. You're moving your hands around a lot too. So I have one hand that's like supporting the clay and the other hand is the one that's shaping. So you're right-handed, so I would if you support it with your left hand and then shape with your right. There, see? Your your tree is also getting really tall. I think that might be part of the your you have a lot of clay happening up here where I made this branch only about this long. Yeah, no, this is work. Okay, so if you're getting frustrated with how it is, you can just set it down. And then you might want to, you can fold this back over and try to start over some, bringing some of this clay down here into the trunk. Because I think that you just have too much up, too much weight up in the branches and they're not up in your trunk. Yeah, there you go. Good. Yeah, and remember your connection point right here. You're making a little skinny thing. Yeah, there you go. Good job overlapping it there. There. And same with this. You might want to just take a little bit of that off and move it down. Good. Okay. So when you get it to a point where you think it might hold some weight, um, I'm going to shape this other one a little bit. And again, I think that it's there's too much clay in here. So as I go up, I'm making it skinnier as it gets to the edge of the branch. And I'm going to take off a little bit of this piece. And then the very end up here, it splits again. This part right here has a little Y in it. I don't think that's going to work. Yep, you're doing it, building it upright again. Remember I said, like, either lay it down all the way. Yeah, but it's not going to work now. It's okay. So I think you're, 
think about your connection points. So here, if you look at mine, it's really thick right here. You're just getting really narrow right here, so I can't hold the weight of the branches. There you go. That's better. Okay. So this one's skinnier, going up this way, it kind of goes off the picture. So we're just going to end it like that. And this one coming off to the side is a little wider. And they look just like chopped off branches. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stand mine up. And it looks like in the picture it's over here on this bottom quadrant like this. Awesome. Okay, when you're ready to stand it up, you just got to move your little roots out of the way. Stick it on there. And then you're just going to smooth it down just a little bit along the edges to get it to stick. So I'm just kind of squeezing it down. We still want to have it defined separate from the, the stand. All right, so and the last thing is we're going to make the little clock. So the easiest way to do that, I think, is to just make a ball. And I got this extra piece. I don't know if I want it that big. I think that it will get too big if I use this piece. What do you think? Probably too big. I'm going to keep it smaller. And I might have some extra clay on the side. Or add it in at the end if I want to add in pieces like these little nubs. If it doesn't, if I can't get it to come off of the clay all in one piece. Okay, so I made a ball by rolling it in my hands like that. And then you've already, you're ahead of me. Good job. Now I just okay. smash it on the table. Yeah, and then you can either smash it on the table if it if it doesn't stick. If the table has tablecloth, okay. you're allowed to do that. Or you can just squeeze it in your fingers. It doesn't have to stay perfectly circular because it's going to look like a milky clock, right? Okay, now, before I stick it on there, I'm going to put all the details, draw all the details on here before I hang it in my tree. Um, so proportionally for this tree, it looks like that's getting pretty close. I might make it just a tiny bit longer. Okay, so we draw the stuff on down here, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna. You can I do would it, probably just stick you can this. Do it in your hand. Can I just stick this down the middle and then just stick the clay? <laughs> on the clay I think the toothpick would stick through. Um, we stick it down just enough so it looks. So I'm gonna smooth it out so it looks pretty smooth on the face of the clock, and then. I'm going to draw it in my hand because I think if I set this down on the table and do it and then try to peel it up, it's going to fall apart. So I'm going to just sort of lay it in my hand like this and I'm going to just draw the numbers on here. So 12 is at the top. So I'm just gently pushing with the, the toothpick. You don't have to push too hard because you don't want to poke it, poke it through. And then I'll go ahead and do the 6 at the bottom. And then I'm just sort of tapping it a little because there's like little pieces that'll peel up when you do it. And then I'll do a three over here. And then I'm just cleaning this off of my finger as I go because the little pieces of clay get stuck to it. And then a nine over here. Okay, so 12, three, six, and nine. And then you can put in the one and the two, four, five, seven, and eight, ten, and eleven. Hey, buddy, I think you're off the camera. Can you show over here what you're doing there? Yeah, see how he's drawing it in there? Good job. Yeah, go ahead and mess it okay. up. Okay, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to just draw a little circle in the middle where the attachment for the hands would go. Okay, and then I'm just going to draw the arrows on here. It looks like, and this is pointing right at 6 o'clock, right? You can make it any time you want. But if you want to copy Dolly's clock, you can make your hour hand point down at the six. And your long minute hand point up to the 12. With a little tiny arrow at the end. Like that. Okay. 
I'm gonna okay. let mine say my favorite time. You have a favorite time? What's your favorite time? Four o'clock. <laughs> you want to tell them why four o'clock's your favorite time? That's our screen time. <laughs> and what do you usually do for your screen time, Sula? Video games. And what kind of video games do you like to play? Minecraft. He likes to play Minecraft. Why are we playing? With Tell Grandma in Minnesota. This is yeah. funny. Okay. All right. I now, if you want any more details, um, he has, there's like a, a funny little knob off to the side here by the nine. And some people think that if you look at this from one side, it almost looks like a funny self-portrait of Dolly where that's his nose and here's his, like an eye and eyebrow. And he had a funny... Um, mustache that the nine kind of looks like a mustache so if you feel like adding this little a knob on there you can do that kind of like a nose not too much clay though because it'll make it lopsided okay i'll just do that and then there is the bottom of the clock has one down here too that's really dripping and, and droopy so I'm going to set that down and try to shape yeah, that. Yeah, but now you can't even read my numbers. Yeah. If you touch it too much, the numbers will disappear. So that's why I held it flat in my hand like this. Instead of putting, you're putting your thumb on top, just keep it flat. And then as you handle it, just be, be very careful and not to looks like a four. touch that. So I'm going to make this little shape. I'm just molding it with my fingers to look kind of like a dripping um, knob at the end of the clock. You can also just leave that off if you want. It's up to you. So I'm squeezing it and then I'm sort of smashing it back up because it's getting too. And then I can do some details in that too. It looks like there's a, almost like a teardrop shape in there. You can just carve it out with your toothpick. And some lines. It looks like it kind of goes like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick this on here. Pinch it a little to get it I to think stick. it kind of goes, it looks like it goes like this. Yeah, so to get it just as it is in here, um, it might be hard to do. So it looks like this, these are tipped back a little. So remember to be very gentle because the lim limbs kind of want to fall off. And I'm trying not to touch the numbers too much. So I'm kind of tipping it back like that. Good job. Okay, and then I'm going to try to do that as well. Setting it in there and letting it kind of melt over I'm gonna, and down. Can I drop, carve my name into the bottom? You know, we don't want to pick it up right now. That would be a good idea to put your name underneath it. But if you picked it up right now and tipped it over, oh, on the top? I'm not sure. Right here. You can put your initials on the top. If That's a great idea, Sula. So your initials are your the first letter of your first name and the first letter of your last name. So I can sort of show this a little bit gently here to the side so you can kind of see what it looks like from the side. Okay, and then you can also, if you want to take your toothpick, do some perspective lines in there if you want. So um, it looks like there's a line. I'm not gonna do that. You don't have to, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with your own art, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and copy what he has there. So I'm just adding in some lines. And you don't need to make shadows with these, like draw shadows, because right. they cast their own shadows. You're like absolutely that. right, isn't that fun? Okay, and then I'll put my an A, B. That's my initials in there. And then if you're liking how it looks, here it can be done. Or if you want to smooth anything really gently, you can. But, yep, yeah, great job. I'm going to very gently show this a little bit sideways here, supporting it so they can see it. And then plop it. Plop. plop. Let's hope not. Okay, so there's our profile of time sculptures. Thanks so much. Thank you, Sila. Did you have a good time? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Okay, say bye. Bye. Bye.